know that we are not alone and we need each other. We need to uplift this message of hope around the world. To know that we are one. The body of Christ is one and together we can hold each other. We can uplift each other. We can support each other. We can encourage each other. Hello to wherever you are right now. I want to say I love you. My name is Nick Vujicic and I am so glad to have this time to share a little bit of encouragement in these times where we ask the bigger spiritual questions and wondering who are we? Why are we here? Being born without arms and legs has definitely forced me to consider the bigger questions of life and Maybe you've seen me on YouTube, maybe you've seen our ministry, Life Without Limbs, and I just want the world to know that hope is real. I never go to people and say that I understand their pain or that I understand what you're feeling right now. Maybe right now your crisis has to do with uh, your family, relationships, maybe your job. And as a society facing uncertainty sometimes, we kind of get stopped in our tracks that when we are going in a routine of life, putting our confidence in what we normally accept as normal, um, that we have a job, that we go to school, that, that we have people in our life. What happens when we put confidence in things or people and they're taken away? Where do we get our strength from and where do we find our hope? Well, being born without arms and legs in Australia, 1982, I first think of my parents uh, having confidence that their firstborn son was going to be healthy. And yes, I was healthy, but I just had no arms and legs. And I said, surprise. And when I asked them, mom and dad, why was I born this way? They said, well, we don't know. I'm like, well, what about the doctors? They said, they don't know. Only God knows. So they said, well, ask God. So I said, God, at six years old, why did this happen? Where are you? Why me? And he didn't answer me. And there were times in life where I just knew I had no arms and legs and I didn't think it was such a big deal. But as I went to school and seeing everyone with arms and legs, those questions kept on coming back again and again. And I'm looking at my brother, I'm looking at my sister. They have arms and legs. I can't do what everyone else can do. And I started going into, I'm going to call it a depression, but really a prison. And I feel like there are many times in life where people look at me and say, wow, Nick, you're so positive. Nick, you're a Christian. You don't deal with anxiety or worry. And you've been able to forgive everyone, right? <laughs> I want you to know that even though we become a Christian and believe in God, it doesn't mean that we don't worry. We still have ups and downs. When we believe in a God who's faithful, it doesn't mean that we still don't question sometimes. Questioning why things have happened is one thing, but holding on to the hope that God is God, that He does let bad things happen. The Bible says, that the rain falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. And so no matter who we are, when we believe in God, when we believe in heaven, when we believe that He has a plan, hope, and a future, the one thing that we must face here on earth is physical death. But if our soul is restored and our spirit is filled with His strength and His peace and the knowledge of His love, then that's when faith overrides all fear. And maybe your prison looks like a fear or depression like mine. You don't know how it feels to have no arms and no legs. And I don't know how it is to be in a broken home or to be abused 
or to have a spouse die. We all go through loss. We all go through pain. And it's not about comparing how your suffering looks on the outside compared to mine. It's about the disabilities of the heart and mind and coming back to the truth that sets us free. The truth of what? The truth that God is real, that He loves us, that He does have a plan, and that He's going to give us the strength when we don't have it. But when we don't know the truth, fear cripples us more than having no arms and legs. And for me, when I was eight years old, I felt depressed and isolated and alone. At age eight, I was on the kitchen counter. I'll never forget it. I'm watching my mom cook and prepare the meal. And I looked down and I thought, you know what? What does my life really look like? I'm never going to get a job. I'm never going to have a purpose. Uh, what am I going to do if I don't get married? I can't even help myself. Am I just going to be a burden to everyone around me? What if I don't get married? Even if I got married, I can't even hold my wife's hand. Even if I had kids, I can't even hold my kids when they're crying. And it felt like I was the only one going through this and no one understands. And so at age eight, I had thought of committing suicide and I actually attempted suicide at age 10. And I looked at that bathtub and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to just tell my mom and dad that I'm going to soak here for a little bit. But little did they know that when they closed the door, I told my dad I just wanted some time, that this was going to be my attempt to giving up. And I just want you to know that I'm so thankful that I'm still here. I'm breathing. I'm upright. Yes, I'm married. Yes, I have four kids. I don't need to hold my wife's hand. I need to hold her heart. My children today, I look at them and I'm like, wow, thank you, God, for life. I want to tell you right now, sometimes we don't know what beautiful things can come from our broken pieces. And I don't know what your broken pieces are, but God knows your broken pieces. And He's right there with you now. And He's made sure that a limbless man helps you to understand that a life without limbs is, is nothing compared to a life without hope, a life without real purpose a life without God, a life without faith. I could never imagine my life. I wouldn't be here. And it's only by God's grace and mercy that I've realized I need to take one day at a time to trust in God, to trust that what the Bible says is true, that even though all I see is pain and all I fear, all I, all I feel is a prison of fear, depression, anxiety, worry, that despite all that, that with faith, I know that I'm not alone. And I want you to know that in my life, I needed my greatest miracle, not arms and legs. Do I pray for arms and legs? I do. Do I have a pair of shoes in my closet in case he says yes to me? Yes, I do. But the greatest healing that Nick could ever have has already happened. He has restored my soul. Why do I look positive. It's not because I've got it all together and you know I've worked everything out. No, it's because I have fully trusted in the Lord. I love Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 where it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He will direct your paths. When you know that your strength is not enough and your plans fail and you fail, Maybe people fail you. Maybe a job that you once had security in is not there anymore. When our health is failing, when our investment plans are failing, when a relationship fails, God never fails. And I don't know what you're going through right now, but I gave my life to Jesus Christ at age 15 because I knew that with or without arms and legs, I needed truth, the truth of my value, that I'm not determined in being valuable if I have a job or not, if I have family around me who love me. I know that I am loved by my God in heaven, God Almighty, who's made me wonderfully and fearfully. And when I realized at age 15 that more than arms and legs, I needed my soul to be healed and restored, that 
90 years with arms and legs compared to eternity and a peace that enables me to sleep in peace, to know that God's peace and love makes me more than a conqueror. Why? Because I can't fight my own battles. It's God who fights my battles for me. It's when I ask God to change a circumstance and the circumstance doesn't change, that's when I say, God, help me to trust in you. Change my heart. That it's not about the circumstance, it's about the prison of fear that I got to break through. And I got to tell you, recently I was in a prison and it was amazing to be with the inmates who found Jesus. And I love seeing people of all walks of life understanding that no matter what our circumstance is, that God can give us freedom. And we've been encouraged here at the ministry at Life Without Limbs of letters from inmates who say that when they have found Jesus, they go back to the cells, but they don't see the bars. It's understanding that it's the prison that we find ourselves in on a heart level and in our mind to know that Jesus and the truth of His love truly sets us free. Many of you maybe are not in a physical prison, but you're in a prison in your heart and mind, and Jesus wants to set you free, just like He did for me at age 15. My biggest question of, why would a loving God allow me to go through suffering? Well, we know that suffering came not from God, but from the enemy after the fall of man. The serpent in the Garden of Eden tempted Adam and Eve with a contrary statement compared to what God said. And when we know that God allowed the serpent in the Garden of Eden, He proved to you and me that He did give, give Adam and Eve free choice. If all they heard was God's voice, then I could intellectually win an argument that God never gave Adam and Eve free choice. And that's why He allowed the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Unfortunately, with the fall of man, with Adam and Eve falling into sin, they also faced a physical death. But as you read on in the Bible, you also see that they taught the ways of the Lord to their children, knowing that our spirit and our soul is in the hands of God. And when we're in the hands of committing our soul and spirit into the hands of the Lord, when we face a physical death, we don't die. Why? because Jesus took the sins of the world on a cross. Jesus was the man who said, I am God in the flesh. I am holy. He did miracles and raised other people from the dead before He even went to the cross for us. Why did Jesus die for us? Because we knew that the fall of man, sin, the wages of sin is death. And I had no hope to ever go to a place called heaven, to never be received there. Because why? If I lied once, I'm a liar. If I'm a thief and I stole once, I am a sinner if I only have one sin. Heaven is perfect. And the only way to go into heaven is to be perfect. I don't know about you, but I'm struggling with the Ten Commandments, let alone other understandings of you know, philosophies and laws. Here it is, ready? You can compare yourself to me and I can compare yourself to you, but when we compare our righteousness to God, we're nothing. And the only way to be blameless in front of God and be able to go to heaven is if we're forgiven of all of our sins. Now, at 15, I said, God, if you have a plan for my life, I know that my biggest disability is death and sin. So please come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. The wage of sin was death paid by Jesus on the cross. And he having no sin, he didn't have to die, but he took the sin of the world on his shoulders, died for you and me. And if I believe that Jesus died for my sins, then I don't have to die for mine. And the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now lives in me. Why? Because I asked Him to. Just like I'm talking to you, I talk to God every day. I go directly to God in prayer, reading my Bible, 
and asking the Holy Spirit to comfort me, to give me that faith, to give me His grace every day, to know that I cannot go from day to day in my own, own strength, but God and His grace is sufficient. I pray for arms and legs, but if He does, doesn't give me arms and legs, if He doesn't do any other thing for me, <laughs> I live for Him, I love Him, I trust Him, because I really don't fear death anymore. When I have struggles or if I ever get cancer, I will pray for cancer to be gone. And I don't know if God's going to heal me of being limbless physically or free of cancer, but one day this body will decay. But that doesn't hold me back because my hope goes beyond death. My hope is in Jesus, my friend, my Lord, and my Savior. And as I ask Jesus to come into my heart, I ask the Holy Spirit to fill me with His presence and His power and His peace. If you look me in the eye, you know that I have peace and strength and you know it's not from Nick and it's not because I put confidence in a circumstance to change or anybody or a job. I put my hope and trust in God. There are times where we won't understand, but don't lean upon our own understanding. Acknowledge Him. What does that mean? To thank Him. We're alive. We're breathing. Heaven is real and He will give us the strength we don't have. Maybe you know God as a religion or a philosophical thought. Maybe it's more of a cultural identity for you. For me, Jesus is my friend and He wants you to know Him as your friend, your King and your everything. My friend today, where do you stand with God? If this is your last day here on earth and you go to sleep and you don't wake up here, where do you wake up? Many people say, well, science explains everything. God's not real. I'm sorry, but I have traveled the world and I've seen the spiritual realm. I've seen how God has done miracles right in front of me. Blind people seeing, deaf people hearing, lame people walking, crooked backs come straight. He's even done a miracle in my own back. But I've also seen the power of the enemy. Witchcraft, voodoo, black magic, demonic powers, that's real. Science can't explain that realm. And when we know that science can't explain everything, there must be a spiritual realm and a power and the greater purpose of life, our existence. And I want to ask you, what do you believe? If you're a person who's saying, well, I'm still trying to figure it out and I'm going to take a little bit of this religion and a little bit of that religion, a little bit of that, how sure are you of your, if you will, buffet, a la carte faith approach? Well, I don't want to be a Christian because I know Christians. Well, I want you to know that is no excuse. First of all, I'm sorry if a Christian or a church has ever failed you, but Jesus is the one that we follow, that we study the words of and His life. We read the Bible. Men may fail you, but God never does. Open up your Bible and search for God. I love it. In Jeremiah 29, verse 12, it says, Then you will call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. You're going to find God. Have you found hope yet? Or are you just trying to change this and change that and wait? Maybe use even a substance to have an escape of what you're really feeling. To break out of your prison of fear, of depression, of anxiety, of sin, of guilt, of condemnation. Come to Jesus. When you come to Jesus, it doesn't mean that all these things just disappear. But He promises now that He's going to do life with you. And He's going to open up those prison bars so that you're not captive anymore to your emotions or your fear or any attack. 
is going to be with you. I want you to know that He loves you. And I want to invite you into a prayer with me. What prayer? To say, yes, God, I want to know you. If you have a plan for me, I want to know your plan. My strength is not enough. My plans have failed. And I really want to ask you to help me to know how to pray and read my Bible. I'm not saying don't go to church. I'm asking you right now, do you know him on a daily relationship? Because going to church won't save you. Giving money to the church won't save you. Telling people that you're a Christian. Some of us young people think that we're Christian because we go to a church, but then we tease and gossip at school. We really need to get real in our focus with God. And I want to do that in a prayer where you also ask God to forgive you of your sin, to come into your heart, to fill you with His Holy Spirit, and that He would take over. Don't let circumstances or emotions drive you. Let God sit in the driving seat of your life. Let Him lead you. GPS, God's positioning system. He's going to be with you, and He'll never let you go. He'll never leave you. When a baby starts walking, when the baby falls over, when the toddler falls over, the parent's not angry. He says, okay, get back up. That's the heavenly Father's love for us. And right now, I want to open you up with a prayer. Can I first pray for you before we do the prayer together? Let's do that. Lord God, we thank you for the people who are watching right now, wherever they're at. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts right now. Lord, you know the peace that we need and the strength that we need that we don't have. Lord, help us in this time where our heart is in a posture of humility to know that we're not enough, to know that no government, no amount of money, no not one thing, no person on earth can really give us the hope that we need. Lord, who greater to tell us than, than you what our purpose is, how beautiful we are, and knowing that this earth will fade away, that this temporary life is just a blink of an eye in comparison to eternity. Lord, we pray for the sick, we pray for the suffering, we pray, God, that you would indeed do miracles on a physical level. Father, we thank you that you would provide for us and our families. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us and your love never changes. Lord, teach us and show us your way to live day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, I want to lead you in a prayer between you and God. Let's bow our heads. If you want to ask God into your life and start an active personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, it starts off with a prayer. And it starts with you knowing that we are sinners, confessing that we're sinners, telling God that we don't want to sin anymore. We want to live the life He has for us. If that's you right now and you want Jesus into your heart, you want to invite him? You want to ask him? Let's pray right now. Say, Dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for your love. Thank you, God, that you have a plan for me. I need you. I confess that I am a sinner. Forgive me of everything I've done wrong. I don't want to sin anymore. I give you my heart, my burdens, my cares, and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. From this day on, please be my savior, be my friend. Teach me how to pray, and to talk to you. Show me how to live. Help me, God, 
to have faith in the promises in the Bible. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill me right now with your peace, your comfort, and strength. Thank you, Lord, that you're always going to be with me when I fall, when I fail, pick me up and give me faith to know that you're still there. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want you to know that that prayer was real and that God has heard your prayer. I want you to know that that was the day, what you've just said, at age 15 when my life changed forever. It doesn't mean that Nick doesn't worry sometimes and struggles still come, but I know that God is faithful and He'll never change. And I believe that for you, my friend. If you have a local church that you go to that spiritually edifies you and reads from the Bible and studies the Bible, great, go back to that home church when you can. But we'd like to connect with you right here. It's not just about saying a prayer and that's it. It's the beginning of a brand new life in the faith in Jesus Christ. So please connect with us right here and we'd love to hear from you, to let you know that you don't have to walk this walk alone. God bless you. Keep on going. Never give up on God because God will never give up on you.